I have 10 minutes, right? 15, 15 or 10 minutes? 10, thank you, Maria Alejandra. Okay, uh, so no, I think- not, uh, not 15, you, you have max. We are 10, I just seen, I have 10. So uh, let's use these 10 minutes to make a, a little bit of a trip into the history of decentralized cooperation. Um, uh, you have a slide in front of you that starts in the 1940s, but actually I would like to go much further back in the history. Uh, I've recently uh, uh, just uh, did a very small sort of research into the history of intermunicipal cooperation or municipal movements as such, because they lie at the heart of the decentralized cooperation as we know it today. And uh, actually cities cooperated long time in, in the past for different purposes, different goals. And um, I found an interesting ex example of the Hanseatic cities in the North of Germany who already in the 13th and 14th century uh, worked together and on an economic and political basis. So this was really maybe for Europe, the first example of, of decentralized cooperation, cooperation of decentralized entity, not big kingdoms, but that cities that defended their own economic potential, their political uh, position, but also, of course, they defended uh, uh, their own position and tried to help each other uh, when necessary and when needed, um, militarily, but also economically. But then we come to the beginning of the 20th century, uh, where municipal movement actually started to 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 be to be formed to to exist as as an uh, as an as an idea, um, and meetings between different uh, city practitioners occurred already before they they solved different or discussed different problems, but in the beginning of the 20th century at the general exposition in Ghent in Belgium, that was actually the 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 first time that cities came together and said we need to cooperate because we have similar challenges uh, and the challenges were linked at the beginning of the century uh, to growing urbanization and that problem is actually the basis of, of city issues and problems and activities until today. Cities that grow, uh, people that move into cities, the complexity of the environment, uh, of the urban environment, of, of uh, addressing economic issues, social issues, spatial development, um, environments, you know, all the different aspects that cities face and that the local governments face. Uh, but then after, specifically after the Second World War, and it says twinning in the 1940s, it was actually after the Second World War uh, that the world had opened up. Even in Europe, we started to, to travel much more, to exchange. So, so Actually, this was really the period globally to start a great flow of, of ideas, of capital, of people, mobility, not only of, of commercial and, and military, but also private mobility, industrial mobility began to grow. And uh, the situation after the Second World War, especially in Europe, was really, um, let's say, in, in the idea that we need to rebuild Europe together, forget the past and, and, and speak about common future and, and re, rebuild friendships among nations that, that went through big, two big wars, two global wars in, in the 20th century. So, so this idea was really uh, promoted a lot by C. MR, the Council of Munis uh, the C E M, the Council of European Municipalities, that which became then the Council of U European Municipalities and Regions, our European organization, European section. Uh, but there's been a lot more going on. So the first city twinnings really were where the, the principle of, of maintaining friendships between nations, friendships between people. Uh, to make uh, Europe uh, uh, a more homogeneous and, and, and interconnected uh, continent as such. Uh, and then um, that were, were the origins to, to Western new municipalities use twinnings to establish partnerships with local authorities uh, in, in other countries. Um, this was specifically in Western Europe, and this is another maybe of my, of my contributions. Uh, to this part of the lecture is that the situation evolved specifically in Western Europe in a different way than in the rest of the Europe. So in Western Europe, it was really a lot of um, 
partnerships that were um, in the process when, when former colonies became to be liberated, became uh, or, or gained independence from the from uh, um, uh, the former, let's say, large uh, large empires or or large strong countries in Europe, uh, and there arose really also another uh, another angle of of building friendships with people not only within Europe but across the world, uh, building friendships between Europe and Africa, Latin America, Asia, uh, all across the world. So this was where we saw the shift from let's say north-north relations from our European context to north-south relations where Europe started to open itself uh, to the world um, to look into what is going in other countries in other continents but also the idea of the interconnected world started to 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 be uh, to be formulated and and uh, uh, actually global governance uh, became some something in this period with the United Nations and, and the Council of Europe and also different organizations that started to develop to support cooperation between people, basically. And cities, cities at that time still more, um, sought to be the part of, of this solution, sought to be the part of this problem uh, being present and also um, asserting, of course, their political presence to be something, to be a level of governance. Uh, but also to be part of, of the wider movements. So in 1980s, that was also the, the uh, era of, of regionalization. The Europe of region was, a, was something that was the idea that was born in the late 70s, early 80s, uh, where the regionalization was supposed to be the answer to, uh, to the complexity of the modern world and, and ongoing efforts for decentralization and capacity and uh, competencies at local and regional levels. So this shift uh, was really uh, towards development in the 70s and 80s. That was really the, the point where, where we saw that, that it's not only friendship, it's not only uh, cooperation, it's not only political links and, and uh, let's say political uh, idea, uh, but also seeing that that these links can be instrumental, instrumental to development, instrumental to to uh, political discussions in terms of policies, uh, but also in uh, understanding that other partners have something to say at the local level, not only cities, but also uh, multi other stakeholders, citizens. The idea of citizen participation was born in the, let's say, uh, 90s, uh, late 80s, 90s. Uh, the idea of the private sector, which plays a role at the local level in economic development, the understanding that uh, that academics and and uh, uh, researchers have something and can help cities to find better solutions. Um, so uh, this kind of shift from from political to multi-stakeholder or multi-technical to capacity building uh, to to building together. Uh, was really born on in this in this north south period of of decentralized cooperation, uh, and of course we see uh, the the big involvement of UCLG, like the working uh, the CIB working group, the capacity and institutional building, um, and then later after after two thousand eight in two thousand eight we see Platforma uh, being formed in Europe to actually uh, consolidate. Uh, develop decentralized development cooperation as a movement, as a way to, to uh, complement official assistance, cooperation assistance, or official development assistance. Um, and um, also the European Commission started to, to discuss a lot closer with, with us as local government stakeholders. Uh, so what would be our role in the overall development strategies? And then, um, um, came a large global policy framework. So, so we started to do global policy in the 90s, in the, in the 1990s, in the 2000s, uh, with different, uh, let's say, policy movements uh, going on, uh, including the Lomé Convention to, for example, to enforce partnerships-based approach, strengthening capacities of institutions, and strengthening capacities of delivery, um, you would see in, in your module, in your reader, 
uh, for example, the 1992 Rio conference, which provided global recognition on the role of local regional governments as agents in development. Uh, so these were important steps where local governments uh, actually took a proactive role and, and positioned themselves on the global on the global scale or let's say on the on the global global scene. Uh, and we see in, in your slide, you also see uh, different countries that slowly started to become emerging actors, uh, Brazil, Korea, South Africa, Turkey, China. Uh, so countries uh, that, that realize that their role in the world, they want to obviously, there's always a political angle to consolidate a role in, in let's say, in the, in the global scene, but also to be present in the major movements that exist on, on, on the planet here, also in the municipal movement. Um, and today we have, again, a new era, a global era of decentralized cooperation, where we create networks, where we work with lots of partners. Uh, we have lots of institutions that support different aspects. Uh, you see UCLG, you see Metropolis, you see global networks, ICLE, smart cities, um, uh, and different thematic networks that work on specific issues in decentralized cooperation. Uh, and I think the newest era with decentralized cooperation in my last two minutes of this, sum of this very quick summary is probably the era of the Agenda 2030. And that is something that we have uh, started uh, not a long time ago uh, to see how to really take a grasp on global development. Uh, after the, let's say, almost political failure of the Millennium Development Goals, uh, which were maybe rightly criticized of being a top-down approach which ignored the realities on the ground. We have now the opportunity to use this framework to re-life, to re-establish re decentralized cooperation uh, as a tool to achieve global development, to achieve global development mm -hmm. among actors, cities and regions who are unique. And we all, always say cities and regions have to share know-how and have to share their knowledge uh, which nobody else has. So central governments don't know how to provide services at the local level. Big international donors don't really know a lot about the context at the local level. So we see our role as cities and as regions to work with national governments, with international donors, uh, with the international development community to make sure mm -hmm. that, that the role of cities and regions is safeguarded and that uh, decentralization and local democracy uh, will go hand in hand with big international development processes and movements, and of course, flow of international financial uh, aid and assistance. 